My number one priority on this channel is to provide you all with the absolute best information I can. In order to do this, I love to bring on guests from the baseball world that can share with you all more about topics that I may not be as familiar with. In today's episode, we welcome Eric Neeson, the Georgetown pitching coach. He is going to be dropping a ton of awesome information about biomechanical data, his application of data in his career, and also his experience building up an effective analytics team of student managers. If you like these style of videos, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, I'll just pass the mic over to Eric. Welcome to Simple Saber Metrics, the brains behind baseball's latest data-driven revolution. If this is your first time here, and you want to learn more about the practical applications of baseball's latest technologies and training techniques, join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below. The first question that I asked Eric was to simply tell us about his background and how he got to where he was today. For me, came from a small town in Michigan, ended up going to Wake Forest University playing. I always viewed myself as an undersized guy with heart who, who just developed into somebody with a little bit of hard work and knowledge. And then I played a 10 year career. I was drafted in the third round in 2007, played 10 years in pro ball and did just about everything you could think of. Always was willing to take the risk to be better with whether it was new technology or new techniques coming out. And then once that I retired from that career, I went back to Wake Forest University and finished my degree while also coached with the 2017 team that lost to Florida in the game three of the Super Regional. So I got that taste of wanting to go to Omaha and get that national championship and then after that I came over to Georgetown as the pitching coach here and I'm in my fourth year here now. Next, one of the reasons I was interested in bringing Eric on was to hear more about his experience with the application of biomechanical data. You know, it started when I was a player, it was more video and really raw mechanical breakdown based on coaches subjectiveness, which is what we had at the time as a player and I always felt like there was more to it but that was just kind of the beginning of it. And then when I got later in my career, when I was coaching at Wake Forest, I was there and they had the, obviously the biomechanical lab and what they put together with that and just kind of the high-speed cameras and then having the track man data in there and just all this technology surrounding you and how that gives you your eyes in a sense takes away the subjectiveness, but it also proves a lot of the theories that you've had and you've experienced as a player or a coach. So being able to wrap all that technology into one and seeing what it can do for a player, how that can really jumpstart your development and take somebody that's undervalued and make them a major league prospect just by using technology and being able to apply it as a coach is huge. So that really jump started me in, in how we use your body's movements and how your movements may be efficient compared to you and how what areas of like, let's say it's your lower half or your hip rotation or internal rotation or your arm, all that stuff, what you're doing good and bad and how you can adapt that through different drills and just the quickness that you can change and develop layers was amazing to me because the reason I'm in college baseball is to see the twinkle in players' eyes to get drafted and develop and succeed, that excites me. And that's what college baseball was to me. And that genuine love for the game and development is, is huge. And biomechanical data and Repsoto data and TrackMan data and KVS and like all that stuff out there is just tools in a shed to put together and make it easy and applicable for a player to get better on a daily basis. From there, we dove a little deeper into the methods that he found to be successful applying data in general. So at Georgetown, what we've done is I've formed a, a 10 team analyst where we have Rep Soto, TrackMan, the Edgetronic. Then we have the team to kind of break all that down. Everyone's going to have the data soon. So it's not just that you have data. It's how can you have your analytics team, your pitching coach, and your players all communicate easily and efficiently. I feel like I'm more the middleman. I feel like I'm a translator between the two. You know, I understand both worlds. I've been on the field, I've done that, and, and I've understand the data and the science behind it. And bringing those together and just creating an atmosphere and an environment and a culture of communicating and dwindling down the data on the analyst side saying, listen, let's make this super easy where fifth graders can understand it and apply it. And that way they could go out every day because players want to get better, ultimately. They just want to know how how do I get better? Make it quick and efficient for me. And that's the goal. We're dwindling this down to make it practical and applicable every single day. So it's not just a bunch of numbers at a screen. This is something that they can tangibly feel and go out in the field and get better every single day with just that easy roll out of bed type idea. After mentioning his team of student managers, I wanted to hear more about how they aided in this process. 
So, you know, when I first came in, I, it started slow, just like anything, you know, getting something built takes some time and some effort. And really first you got to learn what's going on and what you have available to you. And the biggest resource is people right? Like knowledge and, and, and love for doing what you do. And when I first got in, it started with, with one analyst, Kenzie, who came in and she was willing to help. And we got the data. So I came in from Wake. I was like, we need this technology to help develop pictures. So we started slow, got the rap. So we got the track, man, you know, got this one by one thing. And then all of a sudden we had four pitchers drafted, which was a record. And it was all based on development. And, you know, I tell our guys all the time, listen, there could be the greatest throwing program, greatest development program you've ever seen but it's the heart and soul and hard work that you put into it that gets it and my biggest thing is taking the biomechanical feedback taking the data that each individual produces and making that individual the best version of themselves i was uh, i've seen a lot in baseball where people get kind of thrown to the side that they're not good enough they're not projectable and yes there's some truth to that but ultimately i've seen people prove that wrong so many times because they put hard work and they find something that they do really Really, really well and they keep building on it and developing it and that's the goal with this stuff is say there is something in that data that you do really really well and there's something that we can tweak to make you even better and we're gonna find it so our analytics team we have things you know we have pitch graders we have grading out your stuff compared to where it should be historically tracking and this probably is not new to anybody but it's just how you apply it and how you get the players to communicate with your analytics group and having that communication and like that friendship almost to where they feel comfortable talking and kind of debating. You have to have that open environment and that's really what creates almost like a competition. Like, okay, I can do this better. I'll show you. And you'd be like, well, you need to do this better. And, and that environment makes everybody better. And, and you got something there that, that can basically go on for a long time and you continue to track. And, and that's kind of the example, like starting with those guys and then seeing the development of them getting drafted and going forward. That excites me. I think on that day, I was more excited for them than I was the day I was drafted, which if you would have told me that 10 years ago, I probably thought you were crazy saying that. So this is just something that excites me. It's something that I think is one of the cooler things in college baseball. How efficient can you be, in especially mid-major programs, of overdeveloping undervalued players? And that's our kind of margin of success. Finally, after hearing about his successful experience putting together a fully functioning analytics team, I wanted to hear any tips he may have for starting a student manager program. Yeah, so how it started is I went out and I said, I'm going to find people that are into analytics or into baseball, maybe have some background baseball, maybe not. So what I did is I looked on Twitter and there was this Georgetown analytics, just random. They're breaking down like Boston Red Sox statistics and free agency market. And I was like, all right, well, this guy, you know, he fits the mold. Let me call. Let me get a hold of him through email. So I emailed back, hey, I'm putting this together. You have interest in ops. Like he's like, yeah, absolutely. We have a sports club. We're into this stuff. So that's kind of how it started. And then he became this word of mouth recruiter. And he just said, hey, I got another person that's interested. I said, yes, anybody you know, bring them on. And they come in and I'd interview them and say, well, first of all, why are you doing this? What are you motivated by? What is your future goal with this? Because ultimately that tells me how much you're going to give to it, right? If this is what you love and this is your future and this is where you go, and then you're going to give your heart and you're going to work hard at it and you're going to get better and challenge yourself. So then from there, we had eight to 10 student managers that are working on analytics and we brought them together, created basically a communication system where we could chart projects week by week and just systemize it. And then we created almost departments, right? There's like a couple people that are in the media department that write articles. And then there's the camera department and they break down video. And then there's the R and D department. And then there's like your analytics, practical application. It, it, it all broke down into different compartments. So it, it's creating almost like an MLB organization. And that's the goal, right? And you're, if you're doing that and you have different departments, I can direct to somebody that, that goes on down, down and down. And, and we create this system and most of them are young. So they're going to be doing this for three, four years. And it's really exciting for people trying to do that. It's just work with what you got. Like I said, people and human beings are your biggest resource, especially relationships with them. The more communication, more time you have with them, the more you learn off each other. I'm learning a lot about algorithms and R and all these programming tools that I didn't know anything about storage. And they're learning the baseball side more and they're learning how to communicate with players, which I told them the biggest thing for them is how do you communicate with the players on the field? Because ultimately, if none of this translates down to them, 
them, it doesn't matter. That's how I started and it's continuing to go from there. I continue to be excited about it because they come to me with all kinds of things that like can be mind blowing sometimes. I'm like, all right, this sounds great in theory, but how do we make it practical? Like that's always my question to them. How does this make my players better and how are they gonna understand it in their turn? And that's, like I said, I bring creative ideas to them. They do a lot of the technical work, which they love to do. They're out there. All colleges have these. It just depends how you really systemize it and apply it to how effective it is. And of course, where can people find out more information on you and your program? Yeah, I mean, we have an analytics blog that is student manager run. They talk a lot about things that interest them, things they're working on. You know, they're careful not to give away any secrets, but it's really interesting what they put on there. Um, and it's kind of all over the map. Sometimes it touches on Major League Baseball, but they're really intelligent. They're really dedicated to what they're doing. They love it. You know, if you're looking for any of that, like my Twitter handles on there, I promote it. Our Georgetown Baseball has the analytics page as well. So anybody's trying to read up on kind of the stuff we're doing from that side. Also, um, the biggest thing for me is just to see where the the future's going. The technology is here to stay. It's awesome. And I just love how it gets people better. And people that didn't have a chance 10 years ago are now going to have a chance at, at higher levels and success than they ever did. And that's our goal. All right. So now on to my takeaways. This was an awesome interview. Eric shed so much light on how data has played a huge role in his career. He touched so many times on his priority of keeping things simple, how people are your number one resource. And my favorite quote of the whole thing is when he said, our jobs are to overdevelop undervalued players. All of those things are things that we cover on the channel constantly. In bringing on different guests to this channel, I love to hear all of the different perspectives people have out in the baseball world. You may think that there are simply two paths, a right and a wrong, but I really don't think that that's the case. With a lot of these forward-thinking baseball minds in the game today, it's awesome to hear about the stuff I do on a daily basis being applied elsewhere. Again, Eric, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed having you on, and I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple Saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support, and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.